Hello, it's Heather and I'm back with a new video and today I'm going to be talking about Disney's 13th full length animated feature film which is Alice in Wonderland. Uh, I first want to talk about that I just got a new microphone and I haven't used it since I made my last video and hopefully it sounds better and I'm using a different program to record my audio so hopefully the quality will go up a little bit. I'm just hoping it's just picking up my voice better. Um, let me know if you guys notice a difference or not. I think it sounds a lot better from what I can tell, but otherwise I'm not hugely technologically adept or anything, but you know, I think it, it has made a big difference. So Alice in Wonderland is a movie that happens when you get a bunch of chaotic neutral characters together in one film. This is likely my favorite opening credits sequence so far. The visuals are really aesthetically pleasing to me. I really like that they used the concept art during the duration of the credits. This is another movie I remember the imagery better than the story itself. Uh, you'd think that Alice would have learned from eating the first cookie, uh, no, of course not. Um, I think that she kind of like, I don't know if she's spacey is a good way of describing her, but she doesn't really think before she acts very much. so. Um, I, <laughs> I can definitely think of like people that have kind of like I can think of that are like her, but she's uh, she's a little she's a little airheaded. <laughs> a lot of characters in this film are one-offs you don't ever see again, but one of the few characters that does reoccur I think is my favorite, which is the Cheshire Cat. I think that's probably a lot of people's favorite character, but I enjoy how unpredictable he is, and I feel like it was probably super fun to animate him. I feel like it would be really fun to him. I've drawn him before in different versions, so just drawing him was fun, so honestly, doing an animation of him would, I think would be even better. <laughs> Alice, I wouldn't listen to yourself giving advice since you just crawled down a hole and fell into a pit. Alice thinks that she gives herself really good advice, but she doesn't always listen to herself. I'm not sure how true this is since she eats random things that tell her to eat them, and then she drinks random things that tell her to drink them, but then she doesn't think about the consequences before doing so. One of the things that I remember most from my childhood was the animals mixed with tools and appliances. They stood out design-wise, but that may be my own personal experience. I found that this is actually the first movie that has some end credits, not full credits, but there are a few. So 1951, I guess, mark it on the board. This is the first animated Disney film with end credits. So it was a little earlier than I expected. Um, I also feel like this is the first Disney film that doesn't have a strong purpose since it's almost entirely a dream sequence. It seems like it was fun to work on and I did appreciate things like the character design and the animation I think are all fantastic. But story-wise, I feel like it does fall pretty flat. <laughs> there also isn't much of a character arc, even for Alice. Not much gets accomplished in the film. She's a character who doesn't listen very well, but she has an imagination. This is fine, because there's nothing wrong with having a good imagination, obviously. But she does take off on her sister while her sister's talking to her. Like I said, she's a little airheaded, so... She does the same thing with several characters during the film. For example, with Tweedledee and Tweedledum when they're reciting stories to her. I mean, they were kind of rambling, but it was a little rude for Alice to just wander off in the middle of them telling her stories. But in the end, she doesn't change or improve, she only wakes up. Does she learn anything? We're not certain. In terms of bonus features of this film, it was kind of lacking. One was a short animatic of a scene that ended up getting deleted from the film. The other one was a short of the voice actress for Alice, Catherine Beaumont. She spoke about how one of the songs in A World of My Own originally was the song Beyond the Laughing Sky. Since Peter Pan also was in production at the same time as Alice, the melody was kept but the song's lyrics were rewritten for that film instead. There was also a cobbled together bit with the original song and the original concept art. So overall, I think that it's a very entertaining movie. It does move pretty quickly. The pace is, flows really well. It's short too, which is about an hour and 15 minutes long, um, which again is about the, uh, roughly about the time for length of movies at that time period. Um, but it's, 
kind of lacking in story, I feel. Kind of lacking in character development. Like, there isn't a clear, like, goal in mind other than Alice is like, I'm gonna wander off, and then she's like, no, I just need to try to get somewhere. And then she's like, no, I know I should try to get home. Uh, it's just following the white rabbit, so I suppose that's the goal from, like, the first half of the film compared to, like, the second half, which is like, I give up, I'm just gonna go... <laughs> She does, she does eventually find him because the white rabbit leads her to the Red Queen at the end. And then the Red Queen, um, you know, just ends up chasing her and then she sees herself sleeping and then she's like, I'm gonna, wanna, gotta wake up. So, and then she wakes up and that's the end. Um, another thing about this movie is that I, consistency is kind of weird because she does, she has like the small... <laughs> At the beginning, when she like first falls down the hole, and then she gets the doorknob, and the doorknob tells her to uh, eat the cookie and then drink the potion. Um, the drink makes her smaller. The the eating makes her bigger. But it's not really established like what she has to eat to like make her bigger, what she has to drink to make her smaller. <laughs> um, I, I thought that drinks made her smaller, food made her bigger, but then she eats a carrot later on, and then that makes her smaller. So. I mean, I guess consistency isn't really what you think of when you think of Alice in Wonderland, but um, I think just having like a, some world rules would be nice, I think. I think that it was really made to be an animated, more of an animated masterpiece than more of a, like, a film overall. I don't know, I really enjoyed it. It's not a, at all like the worst movie or anything, but it gets a little weaker for like these films, these early on films, I still think that like Dumbo and like Bambi had like better stories and better plot than this movie did. So I am looking forward to like the next few movies because we have, you have Peter Pan coming up and um, those are definitely like have a lot more of like a story and like a goal and we've got like characters that are like, but we have like one character who's like the straight one, which I guess would be Alice, and then the rest of the characters are just like cuckoo crazy puffs. Um, it's kind of hard to like really like establish too much of a um, like a clear overall goal, I suppose. So, um, but anyway, it's it's not like it's <laughs> it's like having it's like having one Captain Picard and then like a whole bunch of Qs. So. <laughs> instead of the other so the other way around so would be like one other way I'd put it so uh yeah in other words one crazy character is probably good and then you know have the rest of the characters be like the, the really thinking like logical ones or like you know at least have like more of established like reality so um I guess that just all, all the more reason that it is just a dream after all and nothing really makes sense so I guess I can relate, definitely. I have definitely some weird dreams. Um, so to talk about this artwork a little bit, um, I did just draw Alice and I just drew her kind of confused because, you know, she basically is just confused the whole time and, I mean, wouldn't you be? So, <laughs> uh, made sense to me. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this this little video that I made. I hope you guys, sorry, I missed a week last week. I, it's just been a lot going on so um and then i have the comic uploading again so if you guys haven't read that please go read the comic it's jdcomic.com um you can also check me out on instagram i'm H at hr Farrington pretty much on everything and you know it's super easy to find me um and i hope you guys are doing well and still staying safe and social distancing and I hope you guys enjoy this, and please have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you, as always, to my patrons, Andrew and Lenjo, Ben Wright Human, Brandon Tinge, Colin Warmbrot, Council of Geeks, Dark Leap Master, Hexapus Inc., Jack Mahantenny, Jesse Durona, Merrick Bennett, Story Comic, and as always, a very special thank you to my $10 patrons, Corbin Kovalt and Steve Zarzinski.